I like this one because it kind of, it's that final level of tying together some kinematic stuff with some logical stuff that we've been working in the motion one, motion two packets. So if we look here, guys, it says the sprinter accelerates at a constant rate from rest. So we know that V naught is zero. If the sprinter has traveled two meters after one second, how fast will the sprinter be, go, be traveling after three seconds? Okay, so a few things we know. Um, velocity, initial is zero. Time is uh, one second. Um, and the distance he's, this sprinter has traveled is two meters. So if we, kinematics wise, if we look at those four variables, we're gonna choose this kinematic equation, which the initial velocity is going to zero. So that whole term goes to zero. But we can solve it for two equals one half a times one to the second power. We come up with an acceleration of four meters per second squared. Okay? Does that make sense? Okay? If we look at four meters per second squared as our acceleration, and we know that our velocity naught is zero, and now we're going to be figuring out how fast we're going after three seconds. Then, and we know our acceleration is four meters per second squared. Then um, we can go ahead and um, determine our velocity using this kinematic equation. And that one's a pretty simple one because this term goes to zero. And we get four times three. So the guy's going 12 meters per second. Okay? Really, really simple, straightforward, I think. But because it has multi steps, um, kids have struggled to understand that one in the past. Okay? Um, I think from a kinematic standpoint, it's pretty easy. It's a two step problem. Now, if we come over here and I kind of look at it from a logical standpoint, which um, I kind of like this because it seems tight, tidy and um, the equations are pretty solid. Over here, if we look at it, it says in order to travel two meters in one second, which he did, two meters um, in the first second, he has to be going at an average velocity of two meters per second, which I think makes sense to everybody. But if you're accelerating, he wasn't going two meters per second the whole time. He, had, he was going an average of two. So in order to get an average of two, if you start at zero, how fast do you have to be going at the end of that first second? You have to be going four, right? Because then your average would be two. Okay, and I think everybody can see that. Um, so it's if the sprinter is accelerating from rest, he must be going four meters per second at the end of the first second to average two meters per second. So he is accelerating at 4 meters per second squared. Um, and that's pretty simple here because he went from 0 up to 4, which is a change in velocity of 4 meters per second in one second. So his acceleration was 4 meters per second squared. You guys kind of see it. You can solve it that way. You can solve it logically either way. Okay. And then it says, therefore, at the end of the third second, he will be going 12 meters per second. Well, guys, if you're going up every second, 4, and you do that, for three seconds, where are you going to be? 12 meters per second. Okay? I don't know. So my, my goal here today really quickly was just to show you that logically you can work this problem and see because velocity is varying linear with time, linearly with time, that you get to 12 that way, or you can get to 12 using your kinematic equations. Okay? So hopefully that kind of ties those things together one more time and um, I guess once we've tied them together enough times, then the kinematic equations for me make these things super easy to solve. And they're not just magic, but they're tied with logical um, 